Ladies and gentlemen, co-chair of the Abraham Lincoln Bicentennial Commission, Harold Holzer. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Mr. Leader, distinguished guests. It's an honor also on behalf of the Lincoln Bicentennial Commissioners to stand on this sacred spot on Abraham Lincoln's 200th birthday and to join Senator Durbin in thanking all of my fellow commissioners, particularly the congressional members who have been our leaders with the better angels of their nature, uh, Dick Durbin and Secretary LaHood. Thank you. And speaking of the inestimable jewel that Senator Durbin referred to and the struggles that all of the leaders I see arrayed before me continue to struggle to obtain and indeed to improve, I can't help observing as I look into this audience how Lincoln himself would have noted that the struggles of the 1860s had to be fought again in the 1960s. And I cannot tell you how inexpressibly moving it is to see people who walk a dangerous walk along paths that he charted. And I'm particularly honored to be in the presence of Congressman John Lewis today. That doesn't count for my time, Congressman. <laughs> As the President said, the overwhelming significance of place can't be overlooked today. Lincoln strolled through here on the way to his inaugurations. He lay in state in that spot in 1865. And as the President noted, we stand beneath a dome whose construction, he said, should go on as a symbol that the nation would go on. He took his oath the first time when the dome was shrouded in scaffolding, and then the second time the unfinished work was completed, the nation bloodied but not bowed, purified of slavery, the hypocrisy that contradicted its founding document. In this place, we gather near another, perhaps less known reminder of his enduring legacy, and that's the statue that stands behind me by a very young artist named Vinnie Ream. It was unveiled here in 1871 and was not immediately popular. It was criticized by people who thought Congress had behaved inappropriately to pay so much money for a sculpture by so young and untested an artist. And so finally the criticism got to be too much and workers were ordered to haul the statue away. In doing it, they broke off a scroll that symbolized the Emancipation Proclamation. Fearful that they had done something almost sacrilegious, the congressional leaders quickly ordered that it be repaired and restored to its place, and it has stood here ever since, clutching the document that redefined our nation and bearing silent witness to national triumphs and tragedies. But beyond even this majestic place and its icons, as one of his old friends predicted, Lincoln would not only be reproduced ad infinitum in bronze, granite, and marble, but more importantly, enshrined in all patriotic hearts the great central figure of humanity. As this outpouring shows, the place he occupies today is more vibrant than ever. As the apostle of unfinished work and American opportunity who paved the way to our own recent and extraordinary modern history. Toward the great steps America has taken recently to bind up wounds and secure a new birth of freedom. As Lincoln once said, the struggle of today is not altogether for today, it is for a vast future also. It is a privilege to join you in remembering that promise today and to see under your leadership so many of these struggles so nobly advanced. Thank you all for making that vast future seem more attainable than ever and for so eloquently dedicating it today to Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. <laughs> 